Okay, we're ready to start lesson 10. Remember lesson 9 in our Chaos Fractals and Dynamics uh, discussion, lessons. I was actually getting a picture of the Mandelbrot set and defining it fully. And um, remember, we're iterating on the comp complex function f of z equals z squared plus c. Our c is 0. c is any complex number. And we did a graph in the complex number plane. These are points in the complex number plane that we did a graph on. Imaginary, real, and those are going negative 2 to 2, negative 2 to 2. The blue region are points for which the iteration did not diverge. It either converged towards a single point or it oscillated um, among 2, 3, 4, any number of oscillations. That would be called its period. And uh, on the other hand, points out here, and I'm going to use the term points because it, they are in fact points in the complex number plane. They are numbers as well, but they are points, and we'll call them that. Out here, this white region, that region is where we had divergence, where the orbit escaped. And a mandible set had this kind of funny bug-looking picture. And we got another picture, it was slightly more complicated, when we said, okay, we now know these, this blue region, the sea of blue, uh, gives us the Mandelbrot set. Uh, let's keep track of how many iterations it takes for an orbit to escape for points that are not in the Mandelbrot set. And uh, by escape, we define that as getting more than two units from the origin. Because once something gets more than two units from the origin, it will continue to get further and further away. And up here was our, this green region, was our region of uh, escape in only one iteration. This was escape in two. The red was three and so on. And it was nice and um, fairly predictable until we got close to the boundary of the Mandelbrot set. That, that region, we found that the colors varied fairly dramatically and in no easy to figure out manner which indicates that you could have two points fairly close to each other that escaped uh, in very, very different number of iterations. And that's going to be important as we move along. Well, this is a rough picture of the Mandelbrot set because, of course, we just divided our complex number plane region uh, in the negative 2 to 2, negative 2 to 2 plane, uh, graph. We divided it into a bunch of squares, and we would test one point in each of those squares and if that point escaped, we would color it white. If that point did not escape, we'd color it blue. And uh, that doesn't give us a whole lot of detail. What we need is uh, more points. And in order to get more points, we're going to go to a piece of software. And this piece of software is uh, written by Rick Paris, who passed away in 2013. He was a brilliant teacher at Phillips Exeter Academy and uh, he wrote this free piece of software called WinFeed and um, you can get this software simply by going uh, googling peanut software and it'll send you to the website and you can download it and uh, he draws the Mandelbrot set here having many 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 points instead of using blue he uses black for his C of the Mandelbrot set the region out here the, with all the different colors that's where you the points are not in the Mandelbrot set and what we're going to do we're going to show the period as we click so if I click here for instance that means anything in that region that color that shade of red goes to infinity see at three repetitions these guys out here go to infinity at one repetition six seven 8, 10, 12, 13, and so on, 18. Um, these guys in here, of course, do not go to infinity. And what we're going to do, we're going to look at um, at their cycles, at their period. And this is a one period, which means that any point in this region, eventually the orbit is going to approach one number. In this region, notice every point that I click on in there is period 3. Every point that I click on in this is period 2. 
And so what we have here, by looking at the Mandelbrot set, if we know what bulb we're in, we can say what the eventual cycle is, or the eventual period is, of the orbit of that number. Interesting fact, watch this. This is period two, this is period three. See the biggest bulb between two and three? That's period five, because two plus three is five. This is period five, this is period two, the biggest bulb between 2 and 5 is period 7, because 2 plus 5 is 7. So we can, if we know what we're looking for, we can read this picture and say something about the orbitals, which is pretty cool. Now remember, this is the period 1 bulb. This is 3. There is no bulb down here, so we'll call this the 1. And 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 plus 4 is 5, and so on. Okay, notice something else. This is the 1 period. This is the 2 period. Uh, this, These things here are called bulbs. forgot to mention that. This is not a bulb because it's not an attachment. This is a cardioid, so this is the main cardioid. A little heart-shaped figure. This figure out here, this bulb is in fact a circle. And watch this. Period 1, period 2, period 4, period 8. As we move along here, we have period doubling. That should not be surprising, because remember, along here is the real number axis, and when we, if we're just looking at the real um, behavior of the, of, the, of the Mandelbrot set on the iteration of x squared plus c, uh, we found that there was a bifurcation. We even had a bifurcation diagram. Let's take a look at that right now. Okay, here's the picture we were just looking at. Here is the main cardioid, period one. Here's period two, three, five. A lot of the periods are marked. And I pointed out that we had period doubling, one, two, four, and so on. Well, remember this picture up here at the top there? The bifurcation diagram or the orbit diagram with the real values? We put it up here above the complex plane Mandelbrot set. And if we just look at the real, we can see, remember, this is the period one, one period one. This is the bifurcation point, which was negative 0.75. This was, oh, and by the way, over here, this point right, this right here, it was 0.25, where we first start getting a real result in the Mandelbrot set. Uh, right here, negative 0.75, we bifurcate. This is the period two bulb. Right here, negative point, um, 1.25. We go from period 2 to period 4 in the real axis. And it's kind of hard to see, but right there we go from period 4 to period 8, and so on. So what we're seeing here is if we know what to look for by looking at these diagrams, we can predict a lot about the orbits, or let's say predict a lot about the dynamical behavior of f of z equals z squared plus c, with a seed of zero. Okay, now I'm going to use two terms that can be kind of confusing if you don't listen closely <laughs> the way I say them. What we have here is a graph of the Mandelbrot set, and that's done in the C plane, letter C. Okay, not SEA, but C plane. So the Mandelbrot set is graphed in the C plane. That's, that's important to get the distinction because we're also going to do some graphing fairly shortly in something called the seed plane. Remember, our seed is our initial value of z, or of x. So right now, the Mandelbrot set is drawn in the c plane. We looked earlier at this GeoGebra file, and I've changed it a little bit, and then I've put, now put the Mandelbrot set in the back here. All that is is a picture of the Mandelbrot set. And what I want to do is move my C values and watch the iterations. Okay, so I have a C value there of negative 0 0.208 plus 0.572i. I'm doing 19 iterations. I'm not graphing anything until the eighth iteration to give it time to settle down. And I can see that it is actually, as I increase the number of iterations, settling down into a one cycle. Now, if I move over here, 
Can you see the two cycle? There, there. If I move here, you can see it's settling down into a three cycle. Okay, one of the cycles is there. Watch. So one of the cycles is close to the point, so it's kind of hard to, to see it. That's a three cycle. And do you recall that right here, this was a five cycle? And sure enough, watch it jump around. Oops, moved the wrong thing there. There we go. See our five cycle? And so we have a confirmation of what we saw with um, Rick Paris's graph. Here we can actually follow the cycles to confirm that is the five cycle bulb. And so that's the end of lesson 10. What we did was we looked at the bulbs of the Mandelbrot set and discovered that there is a very clear pattern to what goes on there. And we also got a prettier picture of the Mandelbrot set than we got last time. And we see that the this main part here, this main C of points, is a cardioid. And then we have all of these bulbs attached here. And those bulbs have bulbs attached to them. And we're going to talk about that next time in more detail.